Hi, this is Mr. Wathi here. And today we're going to go through using Tinkercad circuits to build our very own circuits. And we're going to be looking at how to add components, you know, some power sources, resistors, LEDs, some basic circuits, um, and then how breadboards work. Nope, not to cut your bread. This is something different. And how to simulate our circuits. And if we have time, we'll look at parallel and series circuits. Okay, so let's get, get started. Open up Tinkercad circuits and to get to your homepage again, you just click on that logo in the top left, the Tinkercad logo. And by default, it goes to 3D designs. We want to go to circuits just right there on the left. We'll click on that and we can create a new circuit just like so. So, like I said before, the first thing we want to, what any circuit needs is a power source. Okay. So I'm going to type in power here on the right. Um, and we notice on the right, this is where all our components are. By default, it's just the basic ones. We can go to all if you want to show all the ones that will show up there. Um, so I'm going to type in power because in order to start a circuit up, we need to have some sort of energy source or power source. And here we have that in the form of batteries. Okay. Um, and we have different options here. You know, we have our nine volt battery, a coin cell battery. This is kind of something that would be in your watch some AA batteries. Uh, the cool thing with all each of these, notice if I click on it, we have our properties that shows up right here. We can give it a different name. Um, the cool thing with the AA battery, we can add more batteries to it. Um, we could even change it to AAA batteries. And we can add a little built-in switch as well, which is pretty nifty. Um, one thing you might notice, well, what is one thing that you notice that is common with each of these three batteries? That's right. They each have kind of two um, areas or two terminals is the technical term um, where we can connect, you know, different wires. Okay. But before we get into connecting different wires, each of these terminal, each of the batteries have two terminals. One is positive. One is negative. Okay. We have positive, negative. There's always a positive, negative on batteries. Uh, positive is always shown by the red, negative by the black. I'm just going to keep the nine volt battery. And you can rotate it using that rotate or just hit, hitting the hotkey R. There we go. Cool. So I want to start making a circuit here. I want to light up an LED. So I'm going to go up to the right of my components panel here and type in LED. And we notice that all these different lights, different kind of LEDs show up. I just want the very basic one. And no, it's not pronounced LED, it's LED, which stands for Light Emitting Diode. We'll talk more about that in future videos, what a diode is. So we have our LED right here. We notice that um, there is a bent kind of leg there and a non-bent one. If I pull up my electronic comp um, components chart, this is kind of what an LED looks like. We see there's one leg that's longer, one that's shorter. This is the symbol the electronic schematic. Um, but right now I just want you to focus on that one leg is longer, one shorter. Why is that? Well, the longer leg is called the anode side. So if I put my mouse over there, it's called anode. The other one's the cathode. All that you really need to know is that the, the bent leg or the longer leg, um, that's where the positive terminal, the positive wire will enter in through the longer leg first. Okay. So let's try this. I'm just going to rotate this. Yeah, like that. And so to make a wire into your CAD circuits right here, all you have to do is click on where you want to make the wire. I can click to bend it. I could uh, just move my mouse around and it follows it. Um, so I'll just move it like so because I wanted to connect to that positive side. And you can notice that you can actually change the color of it. I like to go uh, from the positive terminal. We'll make that red. You can also use the hotkey number two. And we'll go from the cathode side, hotkey number one to change it black, just like so. And we have our completed circuit. Let's see what happens if we start the simulation. And then start simulation buttons just there at the top. Well, we get uh, some sort of explosion. That's not good. So it's saying that the current is too much. Current again is just the flow of electrons. Too many, too much electrons going on. We have to slow that flow down. How do we do that? Well, we use something called a resistor. 
And resistor, well, it does exactly what it sounds. It resists the flow, so it kind of slows things down. You can imagine it, imagine electricity or current, like a flow of water, and a resistor is something that just flow, uh, slows the water down so it's not coming as strong. So I'm gonna grab this component, and what I'm gonna do here, I'll take this wire and just hit that delete button. I'm gonna connect this resistor right there. And the resistor, it doesn't matter which direction I could connect it like that. I could also rotate it around, connect it like that. It makes no difference. And I'll take my wire here. I'm gonna press that hotkey two to make it red. And bring my wire down here, connect it, and start my simulation. And we have the LED is lit up. That is lit. And you might notice here, the resistor, if I click on it, just like any other component, the properties uh, properties panel comes up here on the right, and we have resistance. So we can actually change the amount of resistance going through. And we notice right now we have 1K horseshoe. Nope, it's not called a horseshoe, K ohms. K ohms. So that, that horseshoe, which is the Greek letter omega, last letter of the Greek alphabet, it uh, signifies ohms, or the amount of resistance. So right now, one ohm isn't enough. We get that explosion again. Um, what you can do just to have fun with it, you, you can, you know, keep on adding zeros. What happens to the light, right? So the more resistance, the less light going through the LED, which makes sense, right? More resistance, there's less uh, electricity or current flow of electrons going through that LED. And we can type in something like, uh, I don't know, 400, and that will, you know, make our LED lit up. Awesome. Um, before we had K ohms, K again, just like kilometers or kilogram, it means 1,000. So that's 1,000. This year, 1K ohm would be 1,000 ohms. Okay. So this is uh, just a very basic circuit that we made here. Um, we have a power source, we have the resistor, and we have an LED. And again, if we were to make this in real life, we always want to have a resistor with our LED. Otherwise, it won't explode, it won't be that dramatic, it'll just burn out, which sucks. Okay, let's see if we can add a switch or a button, and then I wanna talk about breadboards, okay? So this is, you know, the circuit's cool, except it's always on. So let's go over here, let's type in switch. And we have a nice slidey switch right here. And I'm gonna delete one of these wires and see if we can connect this up. Cool. So what I want to do here, I want to take my positive terminal and I want to connect it to the middle. And I want to have this side right here, the other side, connecting it right there. So when the switch is on the left side, just like it is right now, um, it, it connects to these two points, right? These two these two terminals, terminal one and the common terminal. Uh, when the other side is connected, um, it connects the common and terminal two. So let's try this out. We press start simulation and nothing happens, which is good. That's what we would expect to happen. Um, anytime you hit simulate, I want you to think about what is should be happening here and see if it actually happens like you think. Okay, cool. So I switch it. It connects these two terminals together. I go over there. What happens? It breaks that connection. Right, we need to have um, a continual connection in order for the electrons to flow from one side all the way to the other. So I'm gonna hit that and it turns it back on. Awesome. So now I wanna introduce breadboarding or the breadboard. So we see right here, yeah, this is cool, the circuit, um, but if I were to make this in real life, it wouldn't work out as nicely. Yeah, I could, I could connect a wire to the end of a, a resistor and so on. Um, but if you look at our components here, this is kind of a resistor in real life. We have these, has a two ends, these wires, to, our LED has wires like that. Uh, we see the, the ends of a, this is a nine volt battery. The terminals look like that. It's hard to connect uh, a wire to that, to, to this, to there, and so on. Um, you would have to use something called soldering, which is where you melt this metal to the different components. That way they, they stay together. Um, but the thing about that, it's permanent. So what we want to use is something called a breadboard. I don't know why it has that name. Um, and here we have different options, mini. We have a regular one and a small one. I'm going to grab the small one. 
click and drag that onto here. Great. Cool. So just want to quickly go through the breadboard and then I'm going to make the circuit with the breadboard. Okay, so right here, um, we see all these little holes and the cool thing is what we could do, we could take our different components and we can pop them into the holes. Okay, uh, what do you notice here? We, we notice on the top and bottom, we have these, this long row of positive, negative. Um, this row isn't positive until you make it positive. So right now, nothing's attached to this row. So it's not currently positive, but this is where you'd want to plug in uh, a wire from the positive terminal of the battery. Okay. And one thing you might notice if I hover my mouse over here is that the whole row highlights green. And that's just to signify that something plugged in here is connected to something plugged in there, which is connected to pl something plugged in there, which is connected to something plugged in there and there and there and there. And there. So the whole row is connected together. Um, same thing with the negative row right there. The, this, these two are called the rails. Um, just, I think, because it goes all the way al along the line. Now we look at the inside component. These are a little different, okay? So it doesn't go uh, right across the row. It's more the column. So we notice that it's one, two, three, four, five. So these five holes are connected. So something plugged into here is connected to something plugged in there, it's connected to something plugged in there, and so on, okay? So one thing with breadboarding, and I know we're using a, um, this is a simulation. Uh, in, in a simulation, you can plug in you know, I could plug in a wire like that. I could plug in another wire like that. In real life, you wouldn't do that. You just plug in one wire for each of the holes. And I'll show you why in a bit. Okay, so what I want to do here, I'm, I'll just delete. I'll delete these components here. Delete, delete, delete some of the wires. Um, I want to take this battery. I'm going to rotate it. Bring it over here. And I want to connect it up. So let's take a look. So I'll take the positive terminal. I'll click. I'll click on that there. And so now this whole row is positive. I'm going to take that negative side, plug it in there, and I'm going to change the color of the wire just so I know what that wire does, right? And another good practice with breadboarding is, is to connect from one rail all the way to the other rail. And I'll make that black. Again, I can go across like this. I could also bend my wire like this but just by clicking. And again, I could click here, make it red, cross over, just like that. And the good practice with that is that now this top rail is powered up, okay? Otherwise, it wouldn't be powered up. Okay, cool. So now what I want to do, I'm going to grab my LED, and I'm just going to shove it in to one of these holes. Maybe bring it over to this side. Yeah. And I'm going to take my resistor and... I'll bring it right here. Awesome. And again, the resistor, you could you could do it on the side that comes from the positive, or I could do it the other side going from the negative. Doesn't really matter. Um, so um, what I want to do, I want to I want to power this LED up. So I'm gonna grab, uh, I'm gonna click right here, and I'll click right here. So notice how okay, I have a ter uh, positive terminal going wire going to this rail. It connects to this wire, right? They're all connected, which goes up here. And since it's plugged into this hole, this is connected to the resistor. The resistor goes across and is plugged into this hole, which is connected to the LED, the positive side, the anode. The LED, you know, goes through, the electricity will go through the LED to this side. And now what I want to do, I need to go from the LED to the negative terminal because every circuit uh, needs to go from goes from positive and goes through all the different components, goes to negative in order to be completed. And I'll press number one to make it black. I'll click right there. And let's see if this works. And it does. Okay, so again, we have electricity coming from the battery, positive terminal. It connects from this wire, it goes all the way across. And then it hits this wire here. The electricity will flow through that wire to this por portion of the breadboard. It travels up here to the resistor, goes across the resistor, and up to the LED. Through the LED, turns it on. And
and it will go all the way down to this negative wire or the black wire here which connects to the negative terminal to have a completed circuit so if any of these wires here are deleted so if i delete this wire right here it breaks the connection and the led turns off so you need to have a completed loop going from positive to negative okay so uh in this video we just briefly looked at how to add some basic components we made a basic circuit using an led a resistor a power source and we looked at breadboarding and how we can use a breadboard um, in order to connect different components and this is especially important in real life where we want we don't want to solder we don't want to permanently connect different components we want to be able to plug some in and remove them and so on um, so thanks for watching this video like and subscribe and i'll be making some future videos looking at uh, programming arduino and all that sort of fun stuff okay take care